Good morning, Year 6, and welcome to Friday's Literacy Lesson. The last one before half term starts and you get a well-deserved rest. So without further ado, let's see what we're doing. It's Friday, so of course we start with our spelling test. So you can do this either on EdShed and send me a screenshot, or you can do it the old fashioned way with pen and paper and just get somebody to test you. But don't forget to send your scores in. OK, Year 6, pause the video, do your test. Right, OK, have you done that? We're now going to move on to our handwriting practice and we are working our way through letters of the alphabet and seeing how the letters join together so that we get that really lovely cursive style. So we're on to C now. And um, if uh, I show you each of the words that we've got on the board, and then you're going to, um, in your purple book, you're going to um, have a little go, two lines of each. So here we go. We lead into the C, R, A, Z, and then into our Y. Crazy. And try and make sure that your letters are nice, uniform size, your lowercase. So then we've got karma. Lead into the C, A, tall, L, M, E, R. Okay. Then coolest, I'm going to do it over here so it doesn't merge in. So coolest, and watch out that your S's are nice and uniform size. They don't, um, uh, they don't sort of get that little bit bigger. We have a, a, a bit of a tendency to make to make them slightly, slightly larger. Okay, so now we've got Signet. The Signet is a baby swan. So into the C, Y, G, N, E, C. Okay, nice loops there. And then finally, activate. A, C, tall T. I V A T E. So activate. So you have got crazy karma, coolie, signet, and activate. Two lines of each, please, in your purple books. Looking forward to seeing beautiful cursive script. Pause the video, off you get. Okay, year six. Hopefully, I'm going to see some beautiful handwriting. We're now going to think about a little short story, a little extract from a short story. And you're going to be using um, the little image of the waterfall again. And it's page four of your writing book. OK, so you look for your writing book today and page four. And there's some questions in your book there that I want you to answer. So you've got why is Omar in the jungle or forest? find the waterfall? What does Omar find and take from the waterfall? The queen of the jungle spots Omar taking the item. How does she feel? And then the queen of the jungle, what does she do? So page four in your writing book, you need to answer those questions that appear at the bottom of the page next to the picture of the waterfall. And that will make sure that you're, you've got some ideas flowing ready for the writing task. OK, Year 6, off you go. Pause the video. Right. Let's have a little look then at our story. So we're going to do it as a small, as a short write. So um, I'm going to give you some things I want you to include. And then I've got some modelling of, of, of ideas to help you. OK. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hook our reader in with a fantastic opening sentence and we're going to start with a verb. OK, so we're not going to have Omar was in the forest. He was scared. OK, we are going to hook our reader in and make it far more mysterious. So I've got my verb here, scanning. So scanning his surroundings. Omar rubbed his eyes in disbelief. So I'm showing, not telling, that he's confused. He doesn't know where he is and he's rubbing his eyes as if to say, what, you know, where, what's going on? OK, so scanning his surroundings. So we're looking round, but I've used a better, better word, a more powerful uh, verb here. OK, 
Okay, so you might want to make sure you've got a thesaurus and you've got some ideas of, of words that you want to use. Okay, your verb. So start with a verb and hook me in with an exciting first sentence. Pause the video, have a go. Okay, so keeping that in mind, where you got to, so I got to, it, Obar rubbed his eyes in disbelief. We're then going to move on to, I want a rhetorical question now. And I've put two in, actually. I've put, where was he? And more importantly, how did he got here? So remember, a rhetorical question, we're not expecting an answer to it, but it's making us think uh, making a reader, you know, work that little bit more. Well, yes, I want to know where he is and, and I want to know how he's got there. So you're hinting, you're drawing them into your story. So a rhetorical question or two, like I've done, to show Omar is confused. Read your first sentence back. How can you start your rhetorical questions here so that you've got that cohesion? It's making sense. It's flowing well. OK, pause the video. Have a go. So we've done two of our steps so far. So now I want a fronted adverbial that's going to introduce Omar's last memory. So I ended up with that bit. More importantly, how had he got there? So what I've done here is in blue, I have put some fronted adverbials that might link with um, your um, rhetorical question that you've asked in the, the previous little sentence. So we've got after a while, eventually somewhat flustered, totally confused, positively disorientated. So what I've done is I've used somewhat flustered. So I've said somewhat flustered, Omar thought back to his last recollection. He vaguely remembered a mysterious market stall and, and I would carry it on with something like, um, and um, a whispered voice telling him to visit the waterfall in the centre of the forest where he might find treasure that people would pay a fortune for. OK, so I've got that idea that and I'm sort of showing that Omar's perhaps a little bit greedy with that, but I'm adding a little bit of mystery, uh, mystery sorry. And um, we, um, again, we're keeping our reader hooked. So read back your last sentence. How did you end it? So we want to start it so that it sounds as if it's flowing. All right. So um, we've got that at, uh, where, uh, more importantly, how had he got here was how I ended it. And then I'm going to put somewhat flustered. Omar thought back, so he's, he's almost, you can still almost see him scratching his head thinking, I don't know what I've, how, how did he get here? Okay, so he's now thinking back and it's a, a little bit of a sort of a flashback. So he vaguely remembered a mysterious market stall and I've got to say it's a whispered voice telling him to visit the waterfall in the centre of the forest where he would find treasure that people would pay a fortune for. OK, so pause the video. Have a go. Right, year six, you will have had a really good go at that last section. So now we're going to add a uh, we're going to use our description that we used from Wednesday. You created some fantastic description about, you know, the senses and what Omar could see and feel and hear, and you used similes and metaphors and personification. And you're going to use it, not in its entirety, you might want to use little bits of it, um, but you're going to use some of that so that you can describe what Omar can see, hear and feel. And I want you to begin with a prepositional phrase. So remember, prepositional phrase contains a preposition. So mine is, under the brilliant sun, the forest was a sea of green. So I've gone straight into what Omar can see. Um, and um, I've talked about under the brilliant sun being my preposition. And I've put some uh, ideas of prepositions here that might help you, prepositional phrases. 
So under the, below the, amid the, towards the, through the. So you might go into, um, you know, under the brilliant sun, uh, Omar uh, traipsed through uh, the, the sea of green. Okay. Uh, so you've got an idea of, of, of you're going to be doing your descriptive work here. So use what you did on Wednesday and um, make sure that we've got some metaphors and similes and all of that lovely work that you did. But remember, you're starting with a prepositional phrase. And I'd like to see some super description here. Make me want to be in that waterfall. You've described it so well. Pause the video. Off you go. Okay, so you've done some beautiful description there. I feel like I'm in the middle of that story now. So now we're going to have an uh, adverb opener to say that Omar's going to explore his surroundings. So he's looked around, he can see these various different things and hear things. And now he's going to go and explore. He wants to have a look for treasure. Okay, so. I've got some adverb openers, some ideas, and you might then look these up in a thesaurus. You might get better words. Now you've got some ideas there. Think about how did I end my last section, right? What will sound as if it flows really well now? So I've put cautiously, Omar rose to his feet and set off in the direction of the water. He could hear gurgling in the distance. Okay. So Omar rose to his feet and set off in the direction of the water. He could hear gurgling in the distance. So adverb opener, and I'm telling us that he's going, he's going to explore. OK, so read back your previous sentence. You want a really good adverb opener that flows, that continues your writing. Tell me he's off to explore. OK, pause the video, have a go. Right. So now we're going to have an ED opener. So he's gone exploring and um, he's going to go into the water. So you're going to get him into the water. So from your last bit where he's gone up and, and exploring it, you're going to have him deciding to go into the water now. And um, He's going to be kicking the water around the weeds, etc., looking for some treasure. And then he's going to find something. And that's where you're going to use an ED opener to tell us how Omar is feeling to find something in the water. So, for example, I might say, um, Omar entered the refreshing, cool water and gently kick the, le the, the leaves and the weeds and the dirt around at the bottom of the, the pool, looking for treasure. And so, you know, perhaps this went on for some time and Omar almost gave up. And then I put, then I might go into, uh, just as he was, uh, so I might then say, stunned, Omar felt something sharp and metallic under his foot and he bent down to pick up what turned out to be a beautiful sword. And then you're going to use a relative clause in this section to give us more details about the object. So you will have thought about an object. I've thought about a sword. You're going to think about a, a different object or you might have a, you might have thought of a sword. OK. And then I want a relative clause to give detail about the object. So we struggled a little bit with relative clauses. So I've, I've sort of given an example of this part. So he's bent down, he's found this sharp metallic object uh, that turns out to be a sword. So then the sword, and this is my relative clause, I'm putting it in brackets, which was covered in tiny, beautifully carved jewels, was most definitely made of gold. All right, so uh, that's the bit which was. Okay, remember, relative clause uses a relative pronoun. We're going to use which, okay, because we're talking about an object. So the sword, which was covered in tiny, beautifully carved jewels. So put your relative clause 
in brackets, was most definitely made of gold. All right, so I'm continuing that. So, okay, remember, relative cause gives us extra detail that we don't necessarily need because the sword was most definitely made of gold, makes sense on its own, but I'm putting in that extra little bit of detail with a relative clause. So, just to recap, because there's two things to think about in this section. You're going to get Omar into the water. He's going to be kicking about and mooching about, trying to find some treasure. Okay, maybe he's about to give up and then something happens. Something's, uh, you know, something sharp and metallic touches his foot. Stunned. Okay, he bends down and picks up, you know, uh, I've put a, you know, a beautiful sword. And I'm going to put the sword, which was covered in beautifully carved uh, jewels, was most definitely made of gold because I'm giving, using a relative clause to give me extra detail about this object. Okay. So pause the video and have a little go at this section. Okay. So Omar's having a, you know, a great time. He's found this treasure and he's thinking, whoop, 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 I'm rich. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going off to, to go and sell it straight away. But as he's, he's celebrating, he suddenly feels a chill. We're going to introduce this character, the queen of the jungle, who is hiding. We're not going to say who she is. Um, Omar's just suddenly going to realize he's not on his own in that jungle. So I put something like this. We go, because we're going to be using an empty word sentence. So I put, holding the sword tightly in his grasp, Omar suddenly felt a chill run down his spine. Someone or something was hiding in the dense vegetation. So the someone or something is that empty word sentence. You could also use a silhouette or a shadow uh, and, and introduce that into it. But I have sort of put someone or something was, hold, was hiding in the dense vegetation. It's, again, it's adding that suspense, that excitement into the story. And it's keeping your reader hooked. Okay. So Omar is going to be, you know, he's, he's feeling great because he's found this fantastic object. He's going to feel rich. Um, you know, and he's like, woohoo, you know, that kind of thing. And then suddenly he feels a bit of a chill. And we've got something or someone is hiding in the dense vegetation or something or someone um, is, uh, you know, is, is, uh, is creeping up on him. So you've got that idea that something is going on. OK, and he feels it. OK, he gets that shiver and then we've got that empty word sentence in. I'm giving you some ideas of empty words that you can use uh, in this next section. Remember to read back. Where did you end up? And then make sure that your this part of your sentence really flows well. OK, we're keeping that cohesion going. Off you go, year six. Right, so we're almost there. So now we're going to use a 3ED sentence in this next bit. So we're going to describe the queen of the jungle's feelings uh, on seeing Omar <coughs> take the item. OK, and uh, what does she do next? So I've given some ED words that you can use and you might, you know, have some different ideas, you, you, you know. So shock, angered, saddened, annoyed, bewildered. These are all what she is feeling. OK, and we're going to think about what is she going to do. OK, so. Omar, so he's felt this chill. Something or someone was it was in the dense vegetation. So I've put that Omar was unaware that the someone was in fact the queen of the jungle. The beautiful sword had belonged to her family for generations. Bewildered, shocked, and saddened, she watched in disbelief as Omar set off towards the village with the sword in his hand. Okay, so I've got my 3ED bit in here and I've got her watching 
in disbelief. So she's watching him go. Is she going to leave it there? We'll see. So in this section, go back to the top. You're going to use a three ED sentence to describe the queen of the jungle's feelings on seeing Omar take the item and tell us what she does next. OK, so adding on to that, um, I might um, put, so uh, with the sword in his hand, I might add on to that bit. Get a nice short, short sentence. She gave chase. So in other words, she ran off after him. OK, so pause the video. Have a go at this section. Right, so she's given chase. So now we're going to have three short sentences to tell us what Omar did when he saw the queen. OK. So um, I don't need that little bit there because I've already put that she gave chase. But if I if I. Um, if I uh, decide that I'm going to leave that she gave chase, I'm going to uh, I'm just going to have immediately the queen of the jungle gave chase. She was not going to allow another precious object to be plundered by strangers. Through the trees, Omar heard rapid footsteps. And then I've got my three uh, short sentences. He froze, he turned, he bolted. In other words, he ran. So you've got to get, look back. I now know that... I don't need that part because I've used immediately the Queen of the Jungle gave chase, which sounds better. She was not going to allow another precious object to be plundered by strangers. Uh, through the trees, Omar heard rapid footsteps. He froze, he turned, he bolted. So he's going to go in a different direction. He doesn't know where to hide. So he sort of he freezes, but then he's perhaps looking round. And he decides to turn and go in a different direction, hopefully trying to get rid of the queen of the jungle. So this section, three short sentences. You are going to um, tell me what Omar does when he sees the queen. OK, pause the video. Off you go. Then finally. You're going to end the extract on a bit of a cliffhanger. So does the Queen catch up with Omar? Does she, uh, do they, uh, you know, go tumbling through the woods and, you know, uh, Omar lands on the sword? OK. Is he dead? Is he alive? Who knows? This is where your ellipsis is going to come in. So there, something's going to happen, some drama at the end of your extract so that you're going to leave your readers begging for more. OK, so. Um, he's turned, he's ran, maybe the Queen's chased after him, uh, maybe she dives and they both go tumbling uh, through the trees and in the course of the tumbling, um, Omar lands on his sword and it pierces his side. OK. And uh, the queen uh, may grab the sword and uh, take it off uh, and, and uh, perhaps uh, uh, wait. Omar screamed, help me. Dot, dot, dot. OK, so you may want to, you know, that kind of cliffhanger ending. What, you know, we've really got to be... Um, wanting to read on and think oh no you know you know when you get to an exciting part in a in a story and you want to make you want to know what happens next so that dot 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 that ellipsis ending i want a cliffhanger okay make me go oh no i was just getting into that okay then when you're finished you need to read through your work and you need to check it thoroughly does it make sense as you're reading it through does it flow does it make sense have you used 
like tenses all the way through? Have you used accurate punctuation? Have you used all the 10 steps as I've shown you to build up this exciting bit of writing? OK. So it's that, it, it, you know, so hopefully by doing it in a slow write, you've, you've got a really good extract. OK. When you've done that, you've got a little evaluation to do. OK, so you're going to look at your work. You've read it through. You've checked it through. You're now happy with it. And then you're going to, I remember we've done this before. I'm going to press the dice and then whatever comes up on the side here that just wants a little sentence um, after your, your story uh, that sort of just evaluates what you've done today. So let's have a little go. We've landed on number one. So what was the outcome of the lesson supposed to be today? OK, what were we aiming for? So little sentence to say, what was the outcome of the lesson supposed to be today? All right. Have a lovely half term, everybody. I'm so looking forward to your pieces of writing. I'm sure they're going to be really exciting and uh, leave me on a wanting uh, more um, through half term. Okay, and I will see you after you've had a lovely rest back on the Monday, 22nd of February. Have a lovely half term, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.